Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to Tea Time. I'm glad you're here this morning. Tell me that you're hopping on and, and watching today. I would love to see some comments and chat with all of you as we get crafty on this last Tuesday of February. Everybody knows what that means, right? It is kit release day. We launched our latest card making kit this morning at 9 a.m. And I have seen lots of you shopping already. So I'm excited to share with you what we have this month. And yeah, we're gonna get started here in just a few minutes. I had to take a little uh, bite of nerds clusters before I came on. So I feel like I'm, I uh, am uh, ready to go. I've got the sugar. <laughs> All right, we did, if you, um, if you tuned into our uh, live last week on the unboxing, then you know that I have a large family size bag of Nerds Clusters that I'll probably have to replenish before our Stamp Joy event, but that has been my candy of choice lately. So hello, Angie. Hello, Rachel. Hi, Linda. Farley's here out in Sacramento. You got your order in this morning. Hi, Paula. Paula, I packed your order yesterday, or not packed it, I picked it, so you should be getting that soon. Hi, Debbie. Joan's here this morning. Hi, Heather. Shelly's here. Rose. Julie. I'm trying to read all the names because my, my very own mother said that she was going to join in today, and sometimes she joins in comments, and then I miss her comments, and she's like, do you ever see me join? And I said, I'll look for you today. <laughs> Kat's here, Kelly in Tennessee. Hello, Vicki. Oh, good to see you. Robin's here in Wisconsin. You bought some nerd clusters over the weekend. They do have, I have seen the uh, kind of seasonal packs of nerds clusters come out. They had them for Valentine's Day and they have a spring pack for Easter as well. So um, I haven't gotten, I did get some Valentine ones. They were yummy. I haven't gotten the Easter ones yet. I'm actually not really sure if the flavor changes or if it's just the color of the nerds clusters that changes based on the seasonal pack. So if anybody else has insight into that, they have definitely hit the candy world by storm. Whoever decided to combine nerds with a gummy, they should win some type of candy award. <laughs> uh, Jennifer, you just tried them also, the nerds clusters. <gasps> Heather says she's never had nerd clusters. Well, we'll have a big uh, party size bag for you when you come for Stamp Joy. Hello, Marilyn. You bought the Easter nerds yesterday. Laura got her lemon Kit Kats yesterday. I feel like this is, we should rename this live to like candy connoisseurs with Taylor or something like that. Cause I, I love my candy and I talk about candy a lot. I'm very passionate about card making and candy, and when I can mesh the two together, even better. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, like I said, it is kit release day at Tailored Expressions, and that launched at 9 a.m. Central Time. It always comes out the last Tuesday of the month, and this month we have a couple, or not a couple, we have an extra day. So you guys have today, and then we have the 28th tomorrow and the 29th on Thursday. And that is going to be your last opportunity to purchase from the TE website and get our hedge hugs. Uh, stamp and stencil combo is the 100 plus freebie for the month of February. So um, we had our Easter freebie for our Easter release last week and that switched over this morning back to the hedge hugs as planned. Um, so you guys have a few extra days here when you get your kit and any other things on the TE website, you can earn our 100 plus freebie or the 200 plus freebie as well, which is the sentiment set that goes along with the hedgehogs. So lots of fun things still happening. Plus, well, maybe this is a little bit of spilling the tea, but Heather is going to be here on Thursday and she's going to launch a new product for us. Something fun that you can use for Easter or for um, really any occasion throughout the year. So Heather's gonna um, do something fun on Thursday and you'll have to tune in for that too. It's just a little something, um, so nothing huge, but you can add it to an order in February or we will continue to carry it as long as we, as long as we can, so. All right, Sean says I should name it Candy Powered Card Making with Taylor. <laughs> I love it. 
That's awesome. And definitely that is how my card making is powered, with candy. I know a lot of others, coffee powered card making would be another one that would be applicable to lots of people, but mine is candy. <laughs> All right, well, let's get started. I'm gonna pull you guys down to this view so you can see what the design team has created with these beautiful products in our Whimsical Wings card making kit is what this one is called. So pretty, you can see the shimmer and the shine of the foil from this release on a few of these cards. We're gonna go through all of the products together and then I'll show you some samples in more detail, talk about some of the add-on products that the designers used on their projects and then we get to uh, get crafty together. So that will be fun too. Okay. Here we go, this is Whimsical Wings. So as we were um, kind of brainstorming, we do an annual kit brainstorm and think about what we'd like to release. And um, this idea came up several times. So these are not butterflies, these are moths, and they are pretty moths, not the dusty brown moths that you might um, that you might kind of think of out in nature, but moths have become a staple in home decor, um, in graphic t-shirts, in uh, notebooks and note cards and uh, fabric designs. I have seen moths everywhere. Uh, so we decided to explore that in card making. And this is what came out of our Whimsical Wings kit. So each kit comes packaged in this uh, zipper pouch with the pouch sticker. You can store it that way if you want. And this particular kit was designed around this stamp and stencil combo. So this is called Whimsical Wings. It is a rubber stamp, and then it has a set of three stencils to fill in the different details on those moths. So if you see all of the colored details on this packaging file, that's what you fill in with the stencil. And the black detailing on the, um, on the packaging is from the stamp. So you can stamp that, you don't have to stamp it in black. Many of our designers used light pastel colors. Um, you can stamp it in any color and then choose three additional colors to fill in the details. Let me pull this out and you can see here what this looks like. So you would start by stamping this rubber stamp. So we have five different moth designs on this one stamp. And then you have the three alignment squares that are going to help you line up the stencils and the coordinating die to cut them out. So then you can see the stencils here. They have those little details. Let me see if I have something I can put this up against so you can see some of those details a little bit better, maybe. I'm looking for a solid piece of paper or something. So there you can see the details that are cut into each of these stencil layers and you have your alignment squares to line them up over your stamped image and then blend those with the color of your choice. So that is the stamp and stencil combo. I'm gonna set this back here. Whitney can put it all back away. And then we've got the coordinating die that I mentioned. So again, you can find those three alignment squares, line them up with your stamped image, and you're going to be able to cut out all five of the moth designs at one time. So we have that as part of the kit. Then we wanted to do something with sentiments, and a lot of times we do sentiments with uh, stamp sets. And this time we decided to do a die sentiment. So you have this signature hello die. It has a nice thin font, kind of like our signature thanks. That has been one of our most popular dies over the years. So we decided to add to that collection with the hello that you receive in this kit. So then set that aside. In each of our kits this year, we have our insiders panels. So each of the packs comes with insiders that are designed to coordinate with the theme of the kit. So this one has these four in the pack and you get three each. They are printed with toner, so you can foil them if you desire. 
There is, I'll just read them to you so you can get an idea of what all of them are. You're on my mind and in my heart. Get well soon. Just checking in to see how you've been. Let's chat. Cheers to another year of amazing adventures and joyful moments. That would be a great one for a birthday card. Then thank you for your unwavering friendship. You are a blessing to me. So that's what the four panels there um, say on our insiders. And then new to all of our kits this year, we have the True Colors Inspiration Panels. So each kit comes with four different uh, inspiration pieces. Each one of them comes with a design team card pictured on the left and then the color combination used to create that card. So hopefully that gives you just kind of a good starting point when you get the kit and it can get you set off in the right direction. Now we sized these True Colors inspiration cards to fit inside of our mini slim binder. So this was one that came with our kit in January. This is from the Pieced Patterns kit, along with the other uh, several that I put in there. Um, but these, I wanna go ahead and put in my little sleeves today. So these are our stencil storage sleeves for mini slim but you can see these cards fit perfectly inside there. You can even put them back to back if you wanted to. And then you've got your inspiration all stored away. If you're collecting our kits, then you'll get four of these with each kit throughout the year. And we have some other ideas for incorporating these into releases coming up in March and April. So definitely uh, stay tuned for that. This is the project we're gonna be creating today. So. Um, even if you wanted to add any notes when you get your kit, you can add those down in the little notes section about other things that might pair well with it as far as stamps or embellishments, that kind of thing as well. So that's kind of a fun addition to the kits this year. Okay, so that was the actual uh, kit and the price of the kit this month is $69. As always, we have additional items that you can purchase separately from the kit if you want to add, um, if you want to add anything to your kit purchase. So one of the things we have designed to go with these beautiful moths, this is called the Lush Greenery Background. How pretty is that? I can see using this tone on tone on just about any color cardstock would be great with flowers, with butterflies. Um, lots of um, elegant things you could put with this background. So that is available outside of the kit if you want to add that. Then we have the Foilet Whimsical Wings. So like I showed you some of the design team samples, maybe I can start to grab some of those and show you both options. So what we have here, I was gonna try and grab two of Heather's cards because she used it both ways. So we have this card that uses the background stamp and the stencils. She stamped the, the image in sugar cube ink on toffee cardstock and then filled in with different colored stencils. Now, if you want to not use the stamp and instead replace with the foilet, you have this panel that's already printed for you. And then you can go ahead and foil those designs and then fill in the stencil details or if you don't wanna fill them in, they do look beautiful just foiled on their own without any additional color added. You could even color with your um, alcohol markers like Olo's if you wanted to color these in instead of using the stencils as well. Let me open these up because I wanted to point out that there are a couple different uh, versions of the foil cards in this one set. So you get a total of 12 cards and you get six that look like this. So this is the stamp artwork and it is mostly kind of solid line or solid imagery, just like the stamp. And then the stencil fills in from there. Now we also gave you another option for foiling and this one is going to create more of the outline of the foil. And then you're gonna to want to use the stencils to fill in those details. Let me show you a sample that Jill did here. You can see she used that this foilet panel and foiled those moths in the silver sparkle and then added the color details. So one of them is a more solid foiled look and the other is an outline foiled look. And they both cut out with the same dies and can be used with the same stencils in the stamp set. 
So that's the foilet pack. You can purchase those separately from the kit as I know not everyone does foiling, um, but if you do, I think the foiled versions of these moths are absolutely gorgeous. And stick this back in there. Then I had mentioned previously the Hello die that you received in your kit. If you purchase the kit, that is called Signature Hello. This one comes in the kit. Now, if you want a backer for that, you can purchase it separately. This is the Signature Hello backer. Sometimes it's nice to be able to set your hello off from the background. Heather did that here on this card. She cut the backer out of vellum and then the actual hello die out of the white cardstock, the sugar cube cardstock. And let's see, I've got, looks like Jill did the same here. She cut the backer out of white so that it had some dimension against her white on white background. And then the, um, the die cut out of Oreo cardstock. I was gonna see if I had other ones here. I do. This one here, Jen Schultz created this one. I love her unique layout, how we have this kind of angled panel coming in from the side. And she stamped her moths without using any uh, stencils to fill them in. And I think they look beautiful. She just used a little bit of white gel pen accenting to uh, kind of draw out some of those details. And then we have that hello with the backer in a darker brown to kind of set that word off of the um, off of the panel color of her card base. So that is another way to use the hello. And then you can also see on several of these that lush greenery background too. Um, Heather used it on both of her projects, and then Jen used it on hers as well. Just a really pretty offset for those moths. All right, let's show you another one here. Susan created this one with the hello and then the backer as well. And I love her background. It's that lush greenery and it is stamped and embossed with white pearl embossing powder. I love the look of that white pearl on the light colors. It just gives it a little bit of shimmer to the cardstock and you can still pull out the detail of that pattern with your eye, but it's really shiny and shimmery all over. So I think that is beautiful. I love those moths that are stamped in the light pastel and then filled in with a few darker colors to give those patterns dimension. All right, then let's see what else we've got here. I have a couple other things to share with you that are available outside of the kit. This is the insiders panels, which you've seen. They are part of the kit, but a lot of times people like to add additional packs so that you don't run out of some of your favorite inside sentiments. So if you want an extra pack of insiders, those are available to purchase um, as an add-on to the kit. And then last but not least, we have our always popular envelope seals. If you wanna coordinate your cards on the outside and the inside, we have two different designs here with the moths. And they are shaped and die cut vinyl stickers. So you can put them on your envelopes or if you just really like the design, you can put them on your water bottle. Uh, that would be pretty, especially if you have any other kind of moth t-shirts or designs, you could just um, jazz up your water bottle and you could be matching with your with your t-shirt. <laughs> All right, so let's show you guys a few more of the samples. Oh, I forgot one more thing. Um, we have an embellishment to add on this month as well. So this is available separately and these are called glossy white rhinestones. I don't know if Whitney will hear me, but if she's listening out there, maybe she can come and um, find our white rhinestones as opposed to our glossy white rhinestones. So there is a difference. If I can hold these up here, we do have what's called white rhinestones on our website currently. They are iridescent. Um, and these new glossy white rhinestones are um, more of a, an opaque white. 
Um, so no iridescence to them. So when you have rhinestones with iridescence, they're going to reflect pinks and blues and purples when they hit the light. These do not do that. So they are just a white rhinestone. Thank you, Whitney. Let me pull out some of these so you guys can maybe see the difference in my hand of the, the new glossy white rhinestones versus the ones that we have currently on our website as, or that we had previously on our website. Okay, so if I can get some of these big ones turned over, hopefully you can see as I turn them to the light, those, these down here have an iridescence to them. So they reflect some pink and purple and yellow, depending on what um, light they're reflecting there. And these then, you can see the difference, are just white rhinestones. They are glossy, so they're still reflective and faceted. Um, but they are non-iridescent. Hopefully that makes sense. But I think both of them are super useful for different um, kind of purposes, different types of cards. Sometimes you want iridescence and sometimes you just don't. Um, a lot of times if I'm making, let's say a sympathy card, I don't want something flashy. I just want something to give a little bit of uh, dimension and texture without adding shimmer and shine. So that's what those white, glossy white rhinestones are perfect for. And they come in two sizes in the pack, so nothing super huge. You can see them on some of the cards here. I've got this one, and then you can see this one here that I put a couple of those inside the, the details of the wings as well. All right, so that's glossy white rhinestones. Let's finish looking at the design team samples and then we'll get to creating together. All right, so this is Jill's. Love what she did with that lush greenery background. How pretty is that? I wonder if she put inside, she did tell me the colors of that background are Dijon and pineapple and avocado, which I think is so pretty in the background. This really looks like that kind of mod boho uh, feel that I see in the home decor um, sector recently, it seems like. So love how she executed that card. Then we've got this one from Jen Schultz and she used one of my favorite products from uh, several years ago. Still those masking stencils coming back and creating that beautiful border of white and a really perfect ombre blend to set off those pretty moths. And then Susan, I love how she created this one with the arch uh, stacklets. I think that's so pretty with the vellum, kind of makes a focal landing point for the moths. And um, you can still see that lush greenery background tone on tone on a colored piece of cardstock. It's not greenery colored. I think it still looks really pretty. Then we've got a few here from Lori Craig. So she made the, these three beautiful pastel cards. This is one, again, that uses the foilet. You can see the super pretty. This looks like the gold holographic foil from TE that she used on those butterflies and then filled in the details with the stencils. Then we have this one, sugar cube on toffee like Heather did as well. I think that's a really striking look. Love the pastels with the peach and the, um, looks like cupcake with peach and maybe some raspberry sorbet. Love that. And then this one, again from Lori, we've got the lush greenery in the background and more of the pastel pinks with the raspberry sorbet and orange and yellow. Love, love, love. So lots of different looks you can get from these. This is the one we're gonna create together now, and I wanted to show you a little something different. So as we were imagining these, I found them to be very striking in black. So that was something a little bit different for me. I don't typically think of stamping images like this in such a dark color, but I love how this looks in the black with different colors inside of it, and we're gonna create this together. So let's do it. All right, 
I'd love to hear what you guys are envisioning using these moths for. What types of cards, what occasions. If you've purchased your kit already today, what are you most excited to use when it arrives? Okay, so I've got my Teal Misty. I'm gonna go ahead and put my sugar cube paper in there. And we'll just place that stamp down there, make sure it's all on the paper and not in the way of my magnet. Okay, so when I stamped these with black ink, I chose to do Versafine Claire ink. And this is just a black that I have fallen in love with for everything but my alcohol coloring. So if I'm gonna color with an alcohol marker, I will grab my Oreo ink, but I am just loving the kind of intensity of color that you get from this particular ink pad. And it's not, um, it's not like other pigment inks that I've tried that can be goopy and take a super long time to dry. This does take longer to dry than a dye-based ink, so we are going to hit this with our heat tool before we go ahead and put the stencils over the top. Um, but it doesn't take as long as some of the other pigment inks that I've tried and decided that I don't like. Nobody likes to smear their finger through their project. and find out the hard way that it's not dry. With our beautiful rubber stamps, you are going to get a great impression. See all of those small details that are etched into the rubber and you get a perfect impression first time. I'm not even gonna stamp it again. It looks gorgeous, it's dark, it's intense, it's filled in perfectly. And that is the beauty of the Tailored Expressions rubber stamps. Okay, so let me hit this with my heat tool just a second. And, oh, my cord is a little bit, here we go. My cord was stuck, so I had to go get it unstuck. <laughs> So if you're doing this color at home, you don't have to hit it with a heat tool, um, but I just want to make certain before we move on that I'm not going to smudge my stamped design. All right. I have the stencil layers here then. We'll look for stencil layer one. And we'll go ahead and put that down. I need to use the alignment squares, making sure those are, oh, do I have, here we go. There we go. Sometimes my brain doesn't want to put it together right. But you can see those little alignment squares match up. You can also see where your stencil openings fall within the openings of the stamp. So you can make sure that everything's lined up perfectly. I've got my teal tape here, so I'm gonna go ahead and tack that down. Make sure that it's just perfect here. Feeling good about that. Okay. All right, so we're gonna come in and get a little bit closer so you guys can see better. And this first layer of the stencil we are going to do with dried fig ink. It's a dark purple color. 
and I'm going to use my Bitty Blender brush because there aren't a lot of openings in the stencil, so using those Bitties is just as quick usually and maybe doesn't use quite as much ink because you can be a little bit more concentrated with your application. And I'm just going to fill in all of the details here. Getting in some of those small openings of the stencil is a little bit easier too with a tiny blender brush. The ink kind of as you travel back and forth around with your brush, it gets in those tinier openings a little bit better than the big brushes do. Right, so we'll take that one off. I can save my little pieces of teal tape and we'll use that on the next layer. Layer number two. Let's get that in place. We never talked about your weekend. Did you guys have a good weekend? Crafting, did any crafting happen? Any card making? It has been beautiful here. Uh, yesterday, you guys won't believe it, unless you live around here <laughs> or somewhere else that was exceptionally warm for February. It was 80 degrees here yesterday in the Midwest in February. I woke up this morning 55 degrees, which is a crazy morning temperature for um for this time of year, for sure. And also living in the Midwest, Iowa specifically, you can see like a 40 degree temperature swing in less than 24 hours. So it's supposed to get down to 30 degrees um, later this evening. And we're gonna have a little bit of a cold spurt for a couple of days and then it's supposed to get nice again. So I spent a lot of the weekend out at the dirt pile with Henry. Henry loves dirt and not mud, but like a dry dirt pile. We have an empty lot, a couple of doors down from us. And so we take Henry to the empty lot with his golf club and he just likes to swing in the dirt, swing his golf club in the dirt. It doesn't even, he doesn't even have to have a ball to swing at <laughs> and we just uh, stand out there in the beautiful warm weather. I even had a tank top on because I got hot with my light jacket. So it has been gorgeous. Okay, so let's pull this up. And you can see how this is starting to come together. So, so pretty. We've got one more layer left. So those white uh, details that you see are going to be blended with a combo of honey and Dijon. You can get kind of creative with these, even though the openings are small, you can use a couple of different colors. And so we're gonna do that on these last dimensional pieces. Let me get, make sure I'm getting it perfectly lined up. And then we'll tack that down again. All right, Dijon first, it's the lighter of the two colors. And I'm gonna use a lighter hand with the Dijon, so I'll kind of brush off onto the side of my stencil before I bring it into the opening. And I'm, I have a, a light grip on my brush to make sure that I'm not pressing too hard and getting a darker detail than what I want. Yes, very strange weather. We also spent a lot of time indoors. The um, girls both had volleyball tournaments this weekend. They both did great. Proud of how they're playing and having fun and All right, so there's Dijon. And then 
then we'll go in with honey and on these kind of larger openings here, I'm gonna keep my blender brush concentrated towards the bottom of the opening so that the outer part of my opening still retains its light yellow color. And that's how we're gonna get a little bit of added dimension to these very small openings. So just be very concentrated. And I'm not trying to really achieve any dimension in those very small dotted openings. I might go ahead and fill some in with the darker yellow and leave some lighter yellow, but you're not gonna achieve double dual colored dimension in a tiny little polka dot opening. All right. So that was honey. Let's peel it away and see, do the big reveal. We've talked a lot about Easter since our Easter release was last week. Oh, I love it. That was so simple and so stunning. I think I'm even surprised. <laughs> I love that when it's easy and it turns out beautiful. Um, I love it when that happens. So we've been talking a little bit about Easter too and I can't believe it's coming up so fast. Last week on the live, I showed you my girls' Easter baskets, so I'm glad to have those done. I just need to think about Henry's Easter basket. And I was remembering past years, I feel like at the um, at Target and stuff, maybe they had some Easter egg-shaped Play-Doh containers. Anybody else seen those or remember seeing those? We have those cute little create a carton bundles and so that's what I did for all my kids Valentine's and um, instead of a lot of candy I put little trinkets that they that they enjoy so my daughters my younger daughters had a lot of makeup stuff in it lip gloss and makeup sponges and that kind of thing but I thought being that it's an egg carton it'd be fun to put little egg-shaped play-doh containers in there Henry loves Play-Doh. In fact, we just keep a storage of Play-Doh containers and then when they start to dry out, we grab a new one. Okay, so let's punch these out. Look at how perfect that is. I love it. Ooh, that's fun. Debbie said she went on a crafty weekend at a bed and breakfast. That's awesome. All right, there they are, all five of them. So pretty. I don't know, do you have a favorite of the moths? I think these bottom two, I think are my favorites. I mean, they're all beautiful. I think this one I like with those larger dots because you can put a little embellishment in there. I love the little white daisies on this guy's wings. And so that's my favorite of the two little guys. And then I just love the shape of this one with that pretty curve to the, to the wing. So, okay, let's go ahead then and create the rest of our project. We're gonna use three of these. I used all three, two of the little guys and one big one in the center. And we're gonna make a mini slim card. I did wanna point out that one of the nice things we have on our website, these are called mini slim layer stacklets and additional mini slim layer stacklets. Just like our sets of A2 stacklets, we have these for mini slim and they are what helped me create these layers. Absolutely perfectly cut layers that will, um, there's that just 1 16th inch border around the outside of that. And these two die sets combined together are what helps you create that perfect cut look. So if you use your A2 layer stacklets all the time and you also like making mini slim cards, 
then consider grabbing these layer stacklets and you don't have to measure and um, and finagle with those 1 16th inch borders anymore. You can just die cut them. All right, so I'm gonna grab my favorite, one of my favorite, actually, maybe, I'm gonna do this one a little differently. So on my original project, I grabbed one of my favorite background stamps from my collection. I've been, this one just sits out on my desk. Honestly, I'd never put it away because I'm always reaching for it. Uh, but I used that one on this project that I created prior to the live, but I think I'd like to create with the lush greenery background, which, you know, Whitney is so good at setting me up, but I didn't tell her I was gonna go rogue on this plan. So I'm gonna run and grab my lush greenery background. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. And guess what? It's also dirty, so you guys are gonna have to bear with me while I clean it a little bit. I was crafting before this, decided to just try something with this background stamp. Are you going crazy? Anymore? I went rogue! Did what? you hear? <laughs> I know. Yeah, as soon as I hear Whitney, then I'm like, uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> What's happening? Yeah. It okay. happens sometimes, right? Hey, I'm excited. I always like going rogue. Sometimes you come up with great things that way. You just never know. But <laughs> I wanted to use this lush greenery background instead of the knocked on or knock on wood because I already used that. And we saw what that looked like. So we're going to do this one. Great idea. And then we can maybe have a vote on which one you like better. Woo! Okay. So here's that Misty, and I am going to put my stamp down first. And I don't know if she's still here watching today, but um, whenever I use this trick, I always like to mention Mindy. I learned this trick from Mindy Egan. So you put your adhesive down on your grid paper, and then we're actually going to, to make sure that this mini slim piece is gonna fit from top to bottom on my background. I'm actually going to place it face down on the background stamp and then I've got my adhesive over here so I'm simply going to close the back of my Misty. Oh, we've got a little rhinestone here <laughs> and I'm going to press down so that when I open the Misty back up again that cardstock is perfectly in place so when I do ink this and close it I know that it's going to cover the entire uh, part of my background. So let's do it. I've got toffee ink that I'm stamping here onto the toffee cardstock for a tone on tone look. I'm gonna place this down so I can get a little bit better. Sorry, I'm wiggling my camera too as I'm pressing my ink pad into the stamp. Okay, so we'll go ahead and close this and press with our Just Press tool. Open that back up. And I might go ahead and hit that one more time. I think my ink pad, we had a hard time finding our normal toffee ink pad that Whitney just did a great job re-inking all of our pads that Susan and I used to create with. but. We couldn't find our toffee, it went uh, missing. And so we grabbed this one out of the extras pile and I think it's not quite inked as well as my other one. So I'm gonna ink it again. I'm gonna press a little bit harder here. Don't step on your Misty, please. <laughs> and as this dries, it's gonna get even more blended, but you can see how pretty that background stamp looks on there. And the color's going to fade a little bit too. Right now that um, contrast between the cardstock and the ink is really vibrant, but that contrast is going to fade as this ink dries back and it will give you more of that 
tone on tone and not quite so, uh, so much contrast. Okay, so now it's time to splatter. So I'm gonna bring in my splatter box here. I've got the piece down there. I'll be using my Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. I like to put a little bit of the material or the medium on the acrylic block using my paintbrush. I have used quite a bit of this, but there is a lot left. And then I've got my eyedropper. So we sell a dropper bottle on the Tailored Expressions website and I use it often. It's great for water coloring, obviously great for mixing. A couple drops, I put two drops of water in with the splatter or the Dr. P.H. Martins and then just mix those around. And then I'll go ahead and splatter this background. and hopefully not splatter myself. I'm loving it. All right, I think I'll leave my wet stuff in there and just take the paper out. So there's what that looks like. You can see those splatters in the background. We'll let this dry for just a second and let's see what else I've got. I can go ahead and adhere. I have my top folding mini slim card base. Now these we offer on the Tailored Expressions website and the top folding ones are very popular. We also offer a side folding, but the top folding you cannot make yourself unless you have 12 by 12 paper because the full measurement of the mini slim top fold is 12 inches long. So uh, just a nice thing, if you like that top folded look, you can buy them already pre-cut and folded for you. And that comes in sugar cube and toffee are the two colors that we offer for our pre-cut top fold card bases. So I used my dies to cut dried fig cardstock in the same size as the card base. I wanted my card base to be this color, but of course we don't have 12 inch long paper to achieve that. So I just adhered it over the entire front of the card. Now I'm going to hit this with, I don't think it quite had enough time to dry. So give me just a second here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and adhere this now. I think it's dry, let me just make sure. Yep, we're good. Okay, so we're going to adhere this piece to the white. And this is gonna give us our perfect 1 16th inch border because we die cut both of these pieces with the layer stacklets. Just in case we're not dry, I'm gonna turn this over and press down on the back. And then we'll go ahead and adhere this down onto our card base. You can do that with foam tape if you want. I'm actually just gonna pop up my moths and not the rest of the pieces. Okay. That is adhered then, so our card base is done. Now we have our three little moths here. I'm gonna add a few details with um, the little embellishments that I had. There we go. Except I don't have my liquid glue, so I'm gonna have to run and grab that. Just a second. I grabbed Susan's liquid glue because it was closer. <laughs> so 
we'll put a little bit of adhesive down here. I'm going to put them right there and then we'll put them right inside those two white flower centers and then one in the middle here. Easy peasy. And I had to get the pin back in because Susan would not appreciate it if she comes back from vacation and her glue bottles all dried out. She would know who did it, I guarantee. All right, so a couple little rhinestones here. Okay. Now if we lay these out on the mini slim panel, there's the order that I went with on my original card. So we're going to go ahead and put some, we're going to fringe our foam tape and go ahead and put that on the back of these. I've gotten really into fringing my foam tape lately. These foam strips are just so easy to use on everything and I just trim them off of my roll and okay. My little rhinestones need to go back in their home. There we go. So anybody crafting today, what's on your desk? What are you going to be working on? I love hearing. <laughs> yep, my rhinestone went rogue. All right. <laughs> oh, Margaret, you make me smile. <laughs> she said, last night I went to bed thinking, nope, I'm not gonna order this month's card kit. This morning, as soon as it went live, I placed my order. <laughs> And now I'm going to the store to buy more nerd clusters. I love it. Okay, so last one here. Now I did foil my sentiment and I did that ahead of time so that, um, so that we could focus on all of these other things. But I wanted to show you, I used the pre-printed simple strips foil panels. And there is one in here. I wonder if I used all of them. There are several different ones in here, but there is one that says sending hugs and good vibes. Yeah, I think I must have used all of them, but I just cut off the and good vibes part and I foiled just the sending hugs. I've been using thin foam tape, so I can give another layer of foam tape to this card. And I'm gonna put just one little piece of thin foam behind my sentiment and we'll pop that up on the larger moth in the center. Okay, there it is. Okay, now it's time to vote. <laughs> we did two different versions. We did one on the lush greenery background and then the original that I did was on knock on wood background. So which one do you like? I like both of them. So I guess I don't have to choose a favorite, but um, yeah, it's just a little bit more, um, a little more intense look over on the right side with the background being more solid than the textured uh, wood grain on the other side. But 
I think they're both really fun. Okay, we got some hard to choose. We have a wood wood grain. We have a couple lush greeneries. So I think I, I think I hit the nail on the head. They both look great. So uh, let me bring you guys back and I will say farewell for today. Okay, so I did give you a little bit of a sneak peek into Thursday. If you missed that at the beginning, Heather will be live on Thursday and she's gonna be launching a new, a little new product. There's actually two versions in two different colors and so I'll keep you guys guessing until Thursday, but uh, she'll be here at 10 a.m. So mark your calendar for that. And uh, the kit, again, it launched today at nine. It is available in limited quantities while supplies last. So. Uh, and then our hedge hugs stamp is free with orders of $100 or more. If you get up to 200, you get that add on sentiment set as well. So uh, closing out February with a bang and then we are getting ready for a new release in the first week of March along with our stamp joy event. So if you're attending virtual stamp joy, we're almost there. All right, you guys have a 